We have Cabaceo, a dance film with no dialogue that's telling a story completely visually. And then you have Flat Earther, which is based on a stage play and is nothing but dialogue. There are two different challenges. We can knock them out in the same production cycle. The rewards creatively, we're getting a chance to experiment with different styles. We produced both of these films at the same time, uh, partly because we were dumb, but also because we realized that we could shoot them in the same place. Flat Earther was going to be only a day production. Cabaceo, as conceived, was only going to be three to four days. The magic trick that was going to happen to make these two films work was finding a single location that we can move into and not have to move away from. Matt Kyle was handling paperwork and the business logistics. I was working with the actors. We needed another producer to come in during production, which was Regis Terencio. And there's one very important thing I discovered on this film, and that is every production needs a Regis. So when Brian called me and asked me to find the location for these films, uh, there were a lot of challenges. To have the location we needed in LA, it would cost us at least 25 to 30 grand, and we had much less than that. I think in, in a coffee shop, the person serving the coffee mentioned about this restaurant in Pomona that was perfect for us. And Fuego, it's a dance club, and it was only doing hours on Friday evening and Saturday evening. They were just closed and open for rentals during the week. The floor was an important feature <laughs> when shooting a dance film. Like, if you can't, like, spin and stuff, the floor is not, like, smooth, then you're going to have the major issues. And it just, like, kind of had, like, an older feel that, like, you could do a lot with it. And I think because of that, they were able to use this venue for both types of films, even though they were so different. So we loaded in Sunday morning, shot Flat Earth through that night. And then Monday night, we did the dance club and extras for Cabaseo. And then we had two nights with all four dancers. So we loaded out and we're gone by, I think, seven in the morning that Friday. The most interesting thing about Matt and to an even greater extent, Regis, that I remember from set, is not seeing them on set. One of the secrets to being a good producer is that you have to be invisible to production. You are just like making sure that when they go to drink water, they, there is water. You are just, you just have to make sure that when they get there to work, there is a parking spot for them. Regis and I worked together as best we could to make sure that Brian didn't have to think about any of that stuff. Like, you know, we took it as our job to make sure that he could just direct. Yeah, that, that so spot delivered. If you look at the credits and you do a drinking game every time Regis's name comes up, you're going to be wasted. We even got him on camera in Flat Earther as the bartender. Okay. He handled location stuff, he handled logistics stuff, he handled permits, he handled just about everything you can think about. The great thing about Matt coming on board was that he was just game right away for both films. He was coordinating, I think, with five different rental houses, trying to get releases from 30 crew members, 30 extras, plus the principal cast and make sure we have everything in place for the next day. It's a very detail-specific job, and it can get quite grating. If I could go back and do it again, I'd probably still do it again, because um, we pulled it off, right? Uh, if it had been a disaster, maybe I'd have a different answer to that. I did tell Brian that for the next film, it's going to be in one room with four people. No extra, you know, we're not doing dance clubs, we're not gonna do a restaurant, like that was, uh, that was a lot but we did turn out with something pretty. And the other thing that I don't regret about that element of it, it would be hard to shoot both of these movies now in the post-lockdown uh, post current pandemic situation. As we set out to shoot these films, it was Valentine's Day weekend, 2020. We were all aware of COVID on set, and I look back and I'm so thankful we shot these films when we did. 30 extras on set for Flat Earther, 30 extras on set for the first day of Cabaseo, 30-person crew on set the whole time. I think the project just wouldn't have happened if the pandemic hit right before we were going to shoot or something like that. Just getting that many people in a room, you know, we need COVID advisors and, and everybody need to be tested and everybody, it would be vastly complex to do that. Really, we shot those things at kind of the last possible time we could have shot them and not have inflated the budget tremendously just because of the precautions that would need to be taken in the 2022 shoot. And I would like to assure people that we did not intend the most fantastical part of Cabaseo to be the fact that they are in a crowded dance club with no masks on. The greatest joy for me in making these films was that they were made by a community of my friends. DP George, re-recording mixer DJ Lintz, and Cabaseo editor Barry Wise, who were all classmates of mine at USC. 
Jason Shatterland, an amazing feature film director, came out to be our first AD. That's the dance. That's the dance sequence that they got to spin out from. And his wife Mickey was a production designer on both films. Hugh O'Brien, who produced Far and Un Liberación, came out and drove his truck through the background of the flat earther exterior. And then we go inside. His daughter Casey, who made a cameo in Far, is sitting at a table with Paul Hansen, who gave me one of my first jobs after high school working at a video store. He flew himself out from Wisconsin to be in the film. And the third person at that table is my mom, who had never even been on one of my film sets before. Pretty tight. That's, that's why she's in the scenes. Yes. And Blythe, who plays a voice role in Flat Earther and The Bachelorette in Cabaseo, who was shooting all our behind the scenes materials and pitching in to help the crew when a department was shorthanded. She even designed Matt's company logo. And after production wrap, doing these BTS videos, my buddy Matt Basora is behind the camera right now, asking all the questions and keeping us honest as we do them. Films aren't made by a single person. It takes a community. And we've been tremendously lucky to have the support of our friends through the entire process. If Flat Earther and Cabaseo are in any way successful, it's because we've had the support of our friends. Thanks, everybody.